Good evening, afternoon, morning, whatever it is that you choose to listen to the Ski Rex Media Podcast because it comes out on Sundays for people who like to pay for the Patreon and then Wednesday for everybody else and because it's recorded it could be anytime, anywhere. When I say anywhere, I mean anywhere. I have fans and friends now. Tons in the UK, it feels like. People in Canada, all over the US, all over the place. But first, I want to bring up something that's right here in my part of the US Whaleback Mountain. That's right. If you have been a fan for a while, especially this season, you've to- heard me talk about Whaleback Mountain, how much I love it. My home mountain. I am a pass holder. I am there majority of my winter. It's such a great place. Small? Sure. But who cares? It is an indie allied resort for you, pa- you indie pass holder folks. That's right. During the weekend, even on the weekends, if you have an indie pass, yeah, you won't get your two days, but you get 50% off, I think, during the week. Or is it 40? I can't remember. There's so much. I talked to Doug Fish. He can't remember. I can't remember. We have that in common, and that's what it is, and I can't help it. But in any case, dirt cheap tickets if you're an indie pass holder. Not bad tickets if you're not. 50 bucks, I think, it tops out during the season. Isn't that great? That's dirt cheap for a mountain that has everything you want. You want easy? They got easy. You want hard? They got hard. You want trees? They got trees. You want groomed? They got groomed. You want natural? They got natural. They have everything you want with an awesome vibe, vibe, awesome staff, tons of people, super accessible right off I-89. You could spit out your car window on the interstate and hit someone else's window in the parking lot. That's gross, but don't, so just don't do it, but it's gross. But in any case... Come check out Whaleback, Exit 16, I-89 in Enfield, New Hampshire. I love it, Whaleback Mountain. Ski it to believe it. You will love it, too. And our guest might love it, too. Today's guest. Now, Ski Rex Media, we talk to all kinds of different people. We talk to athletes. We talk to artists. We talk to authors. We talk to industry folks. We talk to people who put threads on your back, like Margaret from Trapper of Colorado, Jumping Steve up there, a piece of pow. And now for the first time, new friend of the Ski Rex Media Podcast, Matt Viola. Matt, how you doing from Hill Street Snowboarding? Thank you so much. I'm doing great. I'm doing uh, fantastic. I'm uh, on a podcast tonight. So pretty <laughs> awesome. <laughs> hey, man, we're going to have some fun. We're going to try. We're going to try. Yeah. We usually so succeed cool. here. Um, so Matt, now the, the reason I connected with Matt is the same reason a lot of people connect now. It's on social media. I saw, um, I started following Matt and he started following me, um, mm-hmm. Hill Street Snowboarding on Instagram. Before we get into what you, who you are, and what you actually do on your Instagram, you definitely have a lot of, like any of us who are in the business, a lot of people doing what we do. In your case, snowboarding, in my case, skiing and snowboarding. And a lot of that I've seen is from Big Snow American Dream, right? Yeah. Well, certainly over the past, uh, Two summers, um, they just opened up where I live in New Jersey, a town called Clifton. I'm not even 10 minutes away from American Dream. So it's super easy for me to jump in the car, get there, and do a whole bunch of laps for an hour or two and drive back home and get back to work. Good spot to take pictures, too. <laughs> totally. Like, if, if you are a fan of snow sports and you're out there, you know, on social media looking around, you, you can find, I mean, you can find Big Snow American Dream anyway. You could, if you hashtag it, you know, search the hashtag, you see people, Matt and Hill Street Snowboarding included. It's a cool place. I've been there. Gear X Media fans and friends have been there. We love it. We think the indoor thing is great and it's totally awesome. And Matt, again, you ride, right? You know, you're not just, now that I never call anybody a poser. People come no. up with it all the time and I laugh. I'm like, all right, dude, I'm a poser. If that's what you think. That's fine, but Matt really rides as well. He's not just putting out gear with his name on him, right? You tell him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been snowboarding well, at, at least 35 years. Um, I picked it up when I was about 14 or 15, um, and I skied since I'm like seven years old. So I'm, I've always been a, a snow sports guy, you know, uh, skiing, like I said, for many, many years. I was a very, very avid skier. Um, and then coming from where I come from originally in Brooklyn, New York, um, you know, all of my buddies were BMX guys or skateboard guys and skiing was just like not a thing for them. That was something I kind of did on my own. And then people started learning about snowboarding. 
So here I am, 14, 15 years old or so, and all my buddies are talking about this new thing called snowboarding. And I'm like, well, I've been skiing for so many years, and I was finally pretty proficient, like really comfortable on skis. Sure. And now it's like, crap, I have to learn this snowboarding? Really? Okay. Um, so I picked up snowboarding, luckily, uh, when I was really young, and it's been a hell of an experience from day one. And I've, I've never not snowboarded since that first day. Like a year has never passed without me being on a snowboard. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. You're definitely in it. Um, 35 years ago, that was, you know, for anybody who's keeping score, not necessarily the beginning, the beginning, but definitely, I can't say renaissance. That's not the right word, but it was coming into its own. That's when Jake started getting his name out there. That's when Stratton opened up everything, you know, all that stuff, all, all the history. Like you were there in that case. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. Cause like I said, it was a really, really proficient skier, you know, for a teenager from Brooklyn, New York. I mean, everything <laughs> within reason, I guess, but I was really comfortable on skis, but this was at a time when a lot of the ski resorts were trying to figure out what to do with the snowboarders, you know, like sure. people would roll up with this, this snowboards, these snowboards. And the, the resort was like, well, all right, you can only go to this section of the mountain or you can only snowboard on this run. That's it. Um, mm -hmm. So I would, because I was like kind of still learning and my buddies were kind of still learning and really just learning. Um, what I would do is to kind of get it out of my system. I would ski in the morning. So I would take my skis and my snowboard with me. And I like originally we were renting because how, how do you get your hands on a snowboard in Brooklyn? Um, so we would rent boards from the, the local mountain uh in my case, it was a place called Camelback up in the Poconos. Um, so I'd ski in the mornings and kind of get that out of my system. And here I am kind of ripping around the mountains, super comfortable going anywhere and everywhere. And then at a lunchtime, I'd go back to the car, take off my ski boots, put on my snowboard boots and grab the board and uh, snowboard for the afternoon. And it was a really interesting experience because anyone who's been in, been in it for this long, if you kind of remember the very beginning of of snowboarding, we weren't very well received by the skiers on the mountain. So uh, it was it was not uncommon for me to to get a lot of high fives from other skiers on the hill in the morning, and then they didn't know I was the same guy. But now I'm on a snowboard, and suddenly I was the enemy. And it was a it, it a crazy experience to just have people love you and then hate you simply because. I was standing on a different piece of equipment. Completely insane. That is an oddity. Like I, I yeah. like we all know people who in during that era transitioned over. You know, they mm -hmm. you know, the I would say a lot of people from that era were were definitely skiers ahead of time. So they were already there and see this thing come out and you're like, all right, let me try this. Um yeah. I know I tried it back in that era, didn't get it, tried it again, didn't get it, kept not getting it and gave up on it. I haven't touched a snowboard since the nineties kids, so there you go. Nice. Uh, well no, I haven't touched them. I haven't ridden one. Ridden a big up. <laughs> oh, dude, it's I I you know, I've never been the greatest athlete, but I take well to sports. Not that one, man. I I don't know what my problem is there. I got a two plank or nothing. It's awful. But he's not yeah. wrong. There was this weird animosity that has I think some people try to keep it alive or trying to keep it alive instead of just letting it die. I mean, most of us just don't care anymore. It's very true. Yeah, you know, I, I, I can get down on some skis any day of the week. I'm, st I'm still pretty comfortable. I still have a, a full setup that I take out one or two days every season. Um, sure. But it, it's a funny thing. You just, you'll randomly meet people on a chairlift in random places. Um that will that will just speak poorly of snowboarders. They, it's like this weird, unnecessary animosity. It makes no sense to me. And I'm I'm thinking to myself like, I am I am, in every sense of the word, a snowboarder. I happen to be skiing today, and some stranger just feels like, oh, it's I I can go talk to this guy and disparage snowboarders to him because he has a pair of skis on. It's the funniest thing. It is. It's a it's a very odd. It, 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 
it, it's just a very odd thing. It, it's still around. Um, you know, I don't, it's not as big as some, again, I think some people still wish they could keep the drama alive only because I think they still have some kind of almost Hollywood attachment. Cause that was a, that was like the storyline of a few not so great small budget movies back in the day, you know, yeah. oh, snowboarders versus skiers. Ooh, it's just like, dude, it's not real. Not even more. exactly, exactly. But you know, I've had a lot of fun with snowboarders. I, you know, one of my best friend, he snowboards. You know, it's funny you bring up Camelback. I just did a post from Camelback today. I've been cleaning up the house here at uh, the old Ski X Media HQ and found my park pass from the CBK Terrain Park from the eleven twelve season. Nice. I just, well, I'm not a park rider. I only did it because that was the like the only part of Camelback I had never seen. And at cool. that point, they wanted you to real quick just go get this pass. Like you really didn't have to do anything for it that I remember. Like I, I can't remember. It was uh, ten years ago now. And, they, uh, yeah, I think what they did is they made you fill out like a waiver or something that said you you won't sue the mountain if you break your neck on a rail or doing a jump or something. And then they said, okay, here's a either a, it was a card or maybe like a some something that they gave you to say, okay, you. This will get you through the gate at the top of that run. Yep. And then you can yep. go and enjoy the park. Yeah. And I have it. I have it sitting right here. I, I put a picture yeah. on it because I found it and I'm like, dude, that's so old now. Well, 10 years old. And uh, I haven't been to uh, Camelback actually in a while since before I moved away from New Jersey. And uh, man, I, I like the place. Some people hate it. Some people love it. That's just the way it is. Um, some people hate this mountain. Some people hate that mountain. Some people hate the ones that are owned by the company that will remain nameless this season. And mm -hmm. you know they're having enough problems. I don't need to. <laughs> I don't need exactly. to help with that. Dude. But yeah, exactly. so shout out to Camelback. That place was cool. I've always had some good times there. Had my worst accident ever there, but that's fine too. I, you know, I walked away. Wow, and that's a good day in my opinion. Yeah, that's a. If you're walking away from it, that's a pretty good worst accident to have. Well, it was karma, and for those of you who don't know that story, maybe I'll tell it again at some point, but it's somewhere on Ski Rex Media. There's an episode about it or something I wrote. Who knows? You'll find it. Keep finding it, or maybe I'll link it. I don't know. We'll figure that out, but this is about Matt today. This isn't about me. Granted, cool. obviously, try to do a podcast, try to be media, definitely a narcissist, but this is about Matt. So, <laughs> Hill Street Snowboarding, what is it? Mm -hmm. What did it come to? How did it come to be? What is this for you? Go ahead and just give us the rundown. Oh, cool. Thank you. Um, so, well, you know, like I said, I've been snowboarding for well over 35 years. Um, and I loved, I've always loved it. It's always been top of mind all day, every day, year round for 35 years. And it's, it's stronger today than it ever has been, you know? Um, and, and historically, you know, the, the world's, the world that I've always been a part of, I, I'm, I'm an IT guy in a, in a law firm at, for, uh, that's how I make money. But um, uh, my buddies and I have always done things with like BMX and skateboarding. And we, we had like these zines that we made when we were kids and we used to print t-shirts as teenagers and we had our own little silkscreen press where we would like make t-shirts and give them out to the local kids. Mm -hmm. um, so it, like, I've always had this... Um, kind of energy, this desire to just put my logo on something and have somebody wear it. And that's cool. It's just a cool thing. So uh, a couple of years ago, um, about two and a half years ago, I decided I'm going to start like a snowboard, just like a, a snowboard t-shirt company. Like uh, with the idea being, it'd be cool to have casual wear, casual gear that Snowboard enthusiasts specifically, uh, but of course anyone and everyone is, uh, it, 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 not, if, you, if you're into supporting snowboarding or anything, uh, the more the merrier as far as I'm concerned. But um, I thought it'd be cool to give snowboarders casual gear that they could wear out in normal life to let people know that they're into snowboarding, really just to promote the sport of snowboarding, period. Um, and the name Hill Street comes from this idea that you know, I'm born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, a uh, very urban environment. Um, and I found my passion in the mountains, you know? So yeah. I, I have a pretty strong history of, you know, kind of not growing up in the streets. I wouldn't put it that, uh, 
I, I wouldn't put it like that necessarily, but yeah. uh, not far from growing up in the streets. You know, like I come from a pretty urban world. Um, but like I said, I found my passion in the mountains and kind of just married those two things. And you take, you know, you leave the streets, you take Hill Street to get to the hill pretty much. And uh, yeah. I had this idea and I said, yeah, let's, let's do it. Figured out a couple of different logos and playing with different artwork here and there. And it's fun. It's I do it as like a passion project for the most part. And it has grown into uh, more and more every year. So uh, it's it's exciting for me to see where it goes from here. It, it, it's very cool. I think one of the things I try to talk about here is how people like artists, whether that's music or books, you know, authors, uh, painting, drawing, photography, whatever it is, that's a big part of the sport. It helps push it the same thing with clothing manufacturers, gear makers, whatever it is. And not just the names you hear like Spider and wh whoever else. I, I just kind of like Spider. Yeah, that's why it was on my brain. But um, yeah. whoever else, but just a straight, simple, hey, here I am in my tea. Boom, Hill Street snowboarding. What is that? Well, snowboarding and then the story. And I, I think it's great. Um, I'm sure anybody who follows Gear X Media on social media has noticed I have three um, Hill Street shirts and I've worn them all. Yeah. Um, yeah I won't you. lie. The one I have to go back on a diet to get into, uh, no. you know, so it fits again. But that's on me. <laughs> I've not been watching what I eat lately. Again, well, it's. Let me tell you something, tell kids. I quit smoking like it was nothing. I can't quit food at all. There you go. <laughs> Little inside. Little inside. Yeah, the past couple of years hasn't helped either, has it? Staying no. home. All this COVID stuff. Not at all. I will say, though, <laughs> not having the lodge there and only bringing a peanut butter sandwich to the mountain, that does help. That stuff is healthy. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> and delicious. Oh, yeah. But that's the <laughs> tailgating. We love the the tail. Shout out to Tech Rob and the boys from Pennsylvania and the the uh, tailgate cheesesteaks. Operate cheesesteaks. Holy smokes. Um. So yeah, <laughs> enough silliness. But again, back to man. I'm just being goofy tonight. I am just wild tonight. I don't know what my deal is. Um. Too much sugar. See, there it is. Um. So Hill Street kid from Brooklyn grows up to be a snowboarder. Now you, when you were out there, you said you went to Camelback. Mm hmm. Did you did you venture out to other places? Because one of the things we do know is the snow sports can be kind of a pain for those who don't live here. I live here, so it's not a deal for me. Um, it's the drop of gas and no time. City people, especially New York, you know, they want to come up here or even to Camelback. That's a good three hours from there. If I remember, it was three hours from where I lived in New Jersey. So it's got to be about three hours from New York, I would assume. Yeah, so you were in South Jersey, I guess, right? Yeah, Ocean County. Ocean County. So yeah, you were down down the shore, as we say here. Um, but from New York City, Camelback is a solid, a solid two hours minimum. Okay. So two and a half, kind of from call it Times Square to Camelback. Okay. Um, and I, I, you know, I Camelback was the, uh, the that's where I learned how to ski when I was a little kid. My dad would. I just had them drop me off at the mountain. This is what you could do this in the, I guess in the eighties where they just leave me at nine o'clock in the morning at Camelback and pick me up at four o'clock in the afternoon when they closed. And I would just lap that mountain all day on my skis and teach myself how to do this. But, uh, as soon as I got my driver's license, all bets were off. So I had my first car before I had my first license, just kind of parking back to my Brooklyn days of, uh, Growing up in the streets, if you will. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. But what's really cool about living in this part of the world, like the kind of the Northeast um, or the East, really, uh, just outside of New York City. I'm in, I live in New Jersey now, but literally like 12 miles from the center of Manhattan. We have so many ski resorts. We have the American Dream, which is hardly a resort. I mean, it's a mall with a ski slope in it. But that in and of itself is a place to go. And that's a year-round place. So it, you're not dependent on it being winter to enjoy it, which is great. Yeah. But we've got a couple of ski resorts in the Pocono Mountains and Northeast Pennsylvania. There's Camelback, of course, and Shawnee and uh, Jack Frost and Big Boulder. There's a Blue Mountain is out there. Elk Mountain is out there. 
And in New York State, there's Hunter Mountain and Wyndham and Bel Air and a bunch of other smaller resorts up and down. Um, we have Vermont, as you know, only um, about four hour drive from where I live. I can hit Southern Vermont. So you've got Mount Snow and Stratton and creeping up into Killington and Okemo and further up into Stowe and all the way up to Jay Peak. I mean, yep. I, I, I've hit pretty confidently, I can say, I've hit every ski resort between here and Jay Peak at one point or another since I've been doing this. I mean, you've been at it for long enough where if you put the work in, not a problem. Yeah. Not a problem. And there and there are so many. So oh, many. It's crazy. Say shout out to fellow Indy Pass users, 110 mountains on that thing. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, right. Crazy. And have a, have a blast with it too. I totally love the Indy Pass. Yeah. But I, I think you're right. You know, you alluded it alluded to it a, a few minutes ago. Skiing and snowboarding, uh, it's a difficult thing to get into and stay into. You know, like, yeah, you need equipment, you need clothing, you need a job that gives you enough vacation time to go and do this stuff. And then you need the finances to go and get to these places. It's it's not it's not an easy thing. It, you know, it's not like playing stickball on the street with my friends as a kid. Like all you needed was a, a Spalding rubber ball and a broomstick and ten kids, and you had two days of fun every weekend. You know? Yeah, totally. No, it's it's actually very interesting. Um, see, this is why we get into these talks with folks. They're gonna be like, "What are they gonna talk about? T-shirts all day?" No, you're gonna yeah. forget that he has hill street snowboarding. That's what's gonna happen. So we'll bring it back. We don't want that to happen necessarily. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Definitely Hill Street Snowboarding, hillstreetsnowboarding.com. Check it out. Hill Street Snowboarding on Instagram. Again, I tag them all the time. Go look. They've been, uh, Matt's stuff has also been shared by uh, Big Snow American Dream on their uh, Instagram account. You know, you don't forget that he's there. But I will it. Yeah, but it is interesting because you brought up now a couple things. And we'll, we'll stay with the city part. For city folk, I can see that. Like for me, I grew up here. I worked at Mount Snow in high school. Now this is in the nineties. Wow. This is American Ski Company. So we were there. We were at Haystack and we were at Killington all the time because we didn't have to pay. And when mm -hmm. some of us were in our senior year or we're skipping school. And you know, when I got out a year before some of my friends, they started skipping school. We were always at yeah. the places. For us, it's not a big deal. Again, it's like me here. It's a drop of gas. It's not, it's nothing. Um, but for city folk, like Matt here, who had to come up here, Poconos, Connecticut, wherever it was, upstate yeah. New York, you know, like Hunter, shout out to Hunter. I like Hunter. Um, it, it's got to be a pain in the ass, man, trying to, you know, run from Brooklyn to the mountains. Oh, it's, it's a commitment for sure. It, it's a big commitment. And that, and that's, you're talking, drivable ski resorts i mean like i said we're super lucky to have to have drivable ski resorts um absolutely and then like anybody you know you when you're into something for for this long you you and you have this kind of passion for it uh you want to do more you know like you yeah go out west and then you go into canada and then you go over to europe or asia and um it's you need a, a pretty healthy investment portfolio to do that sort of stuff. It doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't come easy. I, but one of the great things about skiing and snowboarding is if you put your mind to it, there's always an affordable way to swing amazing, amazing, amazing experiences. A hundred percent of the time. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. I tell people all the time, once you... Once you get experienced, once you've been in it for a while, you're going to find little tricks to get around all the expense and not, not all of it, but a good, believe me, you can make it affordable and don't be afraid to ask someone, say, dude, Matt, Tim, how do I do this? And it's like, dude, yeah. like this, you could totally get it done. Oh yeah. I mean, we the first, one of the first places, well, yeah, not the first, but one of the first places we went to, for example, uh, out West, we, my buddies and I went to Jackson hole. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking like, oh, 
this is like, I better start saving my pennies because it's, it's not, like I said, you got to fly there. You got to rent cars or you got to figure out how you're going to move around hotel rooms. You haven't even bought a lift ticket yet, you know? Sure. Um, but there was a, a place called the, the Hostel X, which I believe still stands today, um, where we would get four guys in a room. I think at the time, a room at the hostel cost like a hundred dollars and a room is literally like like a like a walk-in closet these days you've had four you call it a bed but it's like a mattress on a piece of plywood mm-hmm. a sink in the middle of the room and then a small bathroom with like a little stall shower kind of thing um and that was it but 25 bucks a night i, I don't care how bad it stinks in that place you walk out the front door and you're steps away from the gondola. Psh. We went to Jackson Hole a bunch of times because it was the only affordable place to get to, to stay yeah. at, really. That's a great story because, like you said, most people, as soon as you mention the name Jackson Hole, that they just see dollar signs. That's what they see. And yep. I get it. It's a it, Getting to Wyoming is a pain in the ass and everything else. But, man, if it isn't... I mean, you can't beat that. You can't beat that price. Yeah, it's insane. It's insane. And I, uh, it's funny. It, I think it's still pretty inexpensive. It's, I mean, it's, it's pretty basic. I mean, it's. I don't think that they've done anything with it, at least since I've been there. Um, and it's across the. It's sort of like a. Like an open field, if, if any of you guys have ever skied at Jackson Hole, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, there's like a little open field right at the base of the mountain, and and on one end of it is the Hostel X, right? On the other end of it is the Four Seasons Hotel. So you're literally sharing the same footprint with folks at the Four Seasons, but you're paying a small fraction of the price, and you're on the same mountain hitting the same runs. It's amazing. That's so awesome. Yeah, that's the stuff you got to look for. Don't let anybody exactly. tell you that you have to do it the high-end way because you don't. And I'm sure the experience was ridiculous, like just cramming for it, you and three of your buddies in a room just to hit Jackson Hole. That's got to be a story in itself. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, yeah. had so many crazy stories over the years. <laughs> See? I, I, I wouldn't even know where to begin. Like, going, getting on the bus from Jackson Hole... Uh, we would go to the, a, a local supermarket because one of the cool things about Jackson, and this is not a plug for Jackson Hole in any way, it's just a story. Mm-hmm. Um, great mountain, but uh, you know this is not what that's about. And uh, you 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 don't need a rental car when you go there. You could just sort of stay at the resort and you take a like a city bus, like a public bus, into the town of Jackson. So we would do that, and we got the green light from the owners of the hostel. They had a like a barbecue outside barbecue pit, and we said, hey. We're going to go buy a bunch of meat and just barbecue like random buffalo and whatever we can find in the supermarket. Sure. So we did. And the smell of the the cooking like got everybody out of their rooms, like what's going on down there. And it became like this massive barbecue party with complete strangers from all around the country. Um, like, hey, we got some extra hamburgers. We got some chicken or whatever, you know, whatever it is we bought. And people like beer would just show up people would just yep. have cases of beer okay cool here's a beer here's a cheeseburger everyone's having a good time and let the party begin it was awesome and that my friends is one of the truer definitions of what snow sports is about and why you don't need the snowboard versus skier and anim- animosity it's because dude once there it is it's just Dude, we got a ton of meat. Dude, we got a ton of beer. Well, let's have a party. Okay. Bingo. And you go with it. Yeah. And then and it's it's a cool thing. It's a very cool thing. It, it's a it's a wicked cool thing. It's all about experience. Like it, believe me, I'm now at that point where I'm probably too snobbish to do a to do a hostel like that. I'm just that's just what I am now. I <laughs> I'm not a hoser, but you can call me a snob <laughs> for sure. That's fine. Not super snobby. Like I'm not saying I have money. I'm broke as a joke, but still. <laughs> I pick and choose, but <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, yeah. the experience can be wonderful. Check it out. And, and another way around it, like I said, I worked at a mountain that if you can get in there, believe me, go watch the movie out cold. Granted, that is a 
exaggeration, but our life was kind of similar in many ways. Mm -hmm. And we were high school kids. We weren't even adults. So there you go. Oh man. So awesome. Something else you brought up. Uh, one of your experiences was just getting dropped off at the mountain in the morning as a kid. Now, not like a 15 year old kid, like as a little kid and just going at it. I think that's something we've all lost. And I think that's something the sport has lost. Would you agree? Uh, yeah, you know, for, I think for a lot of reasons, you know, um, I, I, when we say little kid, I, w with no exaggeration whatsoever, I was probably eight years old, nine years old doing this. I couldn't imagine a nine-year-old child being left at a ski resort these days. Mm -hmm. um, you'd be out of your mind, right? Uh, you would, right? People would be calling the cops. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's, it's like child endangerment. It's not good. But uh, I think it's, you know, society is what society is, and it's it's evolved or devolved over the last, you know, 40 years, call it. Um, the ski resorts themselves have evolved. The financial aspect of this, a lift ticket back then, I think, was like $18, you know? Sure. A lift ticket now is well, 100 bucks, 90 bucks, whatever it is, on a weekend. Yeah. And that's a, this is at like a, a smaller ski resort, like a Camelback. Um, and that's that's not even an expensive lift ticket. That's just what lift tickets cost these days. And that's those were inexpensive, or rather are inexpensive, if you compare it to some of the larger resorts that are charging upwards of two hundred dollars for a day. Oh, yeah. you know, at the at the at the ticket counter. So, getting there is an expense. Outfitting the child is an expense. Getting them access to the lifts is an expense. Well, there's just so much, so many kind of moving parts that have contributed to this. Yeah, just being unheard of experience for a child these days. Totally, and. I actually have something to add to that, but before I do that, it's actually another question I, I have about some of your experiences, and it, it's going to be geared towards being in North Jersey, being in the city. Um, but you're right, kids they don't they're they're on a leash, and I don't mean the training leash. They're you know you can't let them out of your sight. But back in the day, it was so much different, and now we talk about. I I want to say, it was I was talking to John Hunt executive director over at Whaleback. I think it was he and I, and John, if it wasn't, I pardon that. And you know, my memory shot, who knows who I was actually talking to, but we were talking about Whaleback because it is small. If you get separated from your kids, it's fine because you all will end up in the same place. There's no choice in the matter. And that's one of the beautiful things about the smaller resorts, about the independent places, the smaller ski areas that maybe just have surface lifts. You could still get that old school vibe, that old school feel, and that old school feeling of independence if you're a kid. Because, man, it just feels great when your parents say, no, you can do that. Go for it. And it's like, whoa, I'm off the leash. How cool is that? Even though you're really not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, they're kind of watching from afar. But I, I think you're right. It's a, it's a really great point. There are. And Wellback is a perfect example of this, right? Uh, smaller resorts that are, you know, call it like the feeder resort, you know, like you got to start somewhere. Yeah. You don't, you don't need to start at like some extravagant place like a Jackson or a Whistler or a, any of those other big resorts out West. It, uh, all you need is a hill with snow on it, a snowboard or a pair of skis, half decent waterproof clothing, like, or just half decent warm clothing, forget waterproof and passion. That's all you need. That's all, all you need. Started. Have you been up to whale back? You know, I have, um, but it was probably, I was definitely a skier at the time. So it was before I was really into snowboarding. Um, and it was, uh, I think it was a school trip that we went on up to, we went up as far as Loon and, uh, okay. It was, it was a weird thing that like, uh, oh God, I'm trying to remember it, but, but yes, I have been there. Um, but like, it's gotta be like, God, 30 years ago, more than that, probably 40 years ago. Was it even around? It had to have been. Oh yeah, totally. I, I, it's been yeah. around for a while and, uh, yeah. you know, opened and closed throughout the years, but definitely not sure. so long that you might not have hit it. Um, yeah. and it's a great place. Um, I, I, again, I suggest it to everybody. Check it out when you have the opportunity. I love it. The people are great. Um, it's a good joint. 
more about where Matt's been though. And this one for me, it, I, you know, oh, since I went, I went to big snow American dream after it reopened the first time from the pandemic mm-hmm. reopened, not the fire reopened. Yep. Um, friend of mine from up here, we drove down, checked it out with one of our friends from New Jersey who rides, wanted to know what this was all about. People make fun of it. Like, oh, it's, it's not real skiing or snowboarding. I'm like, the snow felt pretty real to me, but whatever. Mm. Um, it's like <laughs> going to the gym, whatever. But the interesting thing to us was, and and, and I'll, I'll, I'll put it like this. When you're, you know, as you're going up to it, you look out and you can see the New York skyline. It's right there. This place, what is it like? And I haven't asked this of anyone yet, which is really stupid because it's been open for a couple of years now. What is it like to be at ground zero for that? Like now that you have this place, what is that like? I haven't asked a city person or a, like, well, that's not a hundred percent true. Shout out to Brian from the highfalutin ski bums podcast. He also lives in New Jersey, not terribly far, but not 10 minutes away either. Um, but what's it like to be right there and now have this in your backyard? Okay. Well, it's, it's interesting. I mean, for me, it's a nice thing to have right and it's a pretty unique thing to have especially you know you're skiing and snowboarding in a mall like it's insane you pull up to a a mall parking lot like a like a multi-level parking lot and you park like you're going to go shopping at you know macy's or whatever or or what used to be macy's or jc or wherever you go shopping i don't know Uh, and you you gear up and you walk through the mall with like your your ski set up on, like your boots, and, and you can sort of carry these in with you and they have lockers and stuff in there. But the again, the cheaper way to do it is to avoid paying all those fees and you just gear up in the back of your car like you would in a parking lot at a ski resort. Mm-hmm. You get on like an escalator, take it up to the second floor. It's hilarious. There's a, the, the big snow is, a, is a, like a ski shop in the mall where you can go buy you know, hats and shirts and gloves and goggles and blah, 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 all the stuff you need. Um, and the entrance to the big snow ski slope is in the back of the store. So now you're like walking through a store, this totally surreal experience in a mall, dressed up in your ski gear, snowboard gear. And then you walk through this little tunnel and ta-da, you're in a locker room and you walk through the locker room and you're on a ski slope in a mall. This is the most insane experience. It, it really so, is good. It's crazy, right? It, it really is. It's the most ridiculous thing in the world. It, it, you know, you pull up and you're staring at the stadium, Giants, Jets, whatever yep. it's called now. I can't remember. But yep. uh, they share the stadium, so it's the same thing, same place. Totally, totally. Yes. And, you know, you go, and, and Matt's not wrong, man. You go walking in, you're carrying this stuff. As you're walking in with your snow gear, People are walking out just with their, again, whatever stores are open nowadays. You know, is Pack Sun still a thing? I have no idea. Uh, I probably, I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> is it a Hill Street <laughs> snowboarding shop? Who cares? Soon, um, if it's soon hopefully. <laughs> okay, then we'll get into that. We'll definitely see. Y'all did forget about it. And we're going to get back see? to it. But I just wanted to get into this American dream thing. But he's right. It is sure. ridiculous. It's a ridiculous feeling. And it's odd, but there's also something odd about saying, wow, I'm in a giant freezer. And for my brothers and sisters who work in retail and grocery um, or who have, you've been in walk-in freezers. You've been in warehouse freezers. That's what you're in, but you're on a quad chair. What the hell is that? Yeah, it's the, like you could throw a snowball from the top of the chairlift and hit the bottom of the chairlift. Like it's not that big of a place. No, but. If you're a brand new skier or snowboarder, or you want to learn how to do this, it's a perfect pli- place to go because it's temperature controlled. I think it's like 28 degrees in there the whole time. So it's not freezing. You know, you're not dealing with wind or hail or snowstorms or fog or any of that business. Um, it's, it's a hill with snow on it, right? It's a great place to learn how to ski or snowboard to figure out like all that beginner stuff that when you're a beginner you have to start somewhere so yeah how do you how do you strap in on a board like what does that feel how do you move around how do you what's the right way to buckle up a ski boot what's the how do you how do you 
shuffle in the lift line? How do you sit down on the lift? How do you get off the lift? All of those kind of body mechanics that you have to learn before you've even skied or snowboard, right? Yep. Like you, you just have to move around on this new device, this contraption that your body is like, dude, what are you doing to me? This is, this is painful. <laughs> so, uh, all of that is, it's a fascinating experience to have 10 minutes from where I live. Like I, I drive to work I, in, back in the olden days before COVID, uh, I work in Manhattan, right? Um, and I would, I drive my car to, to go to the office and I drive by American Dream Mall. I used to drive by it five days a week, going back and forth to work. Sure. It's crazy. It, it, it really is so ridiculous to think that you're in a mall in East Rutherford, New Jersey, yep. and you're skiing. It's odd, but the brilliance of it is with it there. Like now for me, it's like a destination. It's like someone from in the, the city in North Jersey and maybe Connecticut, parts of Connecticut and whatever, come up here. For me, I have to go down there, but there it, you know, you could... You could take the bus across from the city. You could take the train on game days. It doesn't run all the time. I look. Shout out New Jersey Transit. Um, been a patron of yours many times, many times in my life. Um, but yeah, the train only runs to American Dream on game days, everybody. At least it used to. I don't know. But a bus, a cab, it's only, you know, well, that God, traffic down there is a son of a gun for anybody who's never oh, been. But in any case, oh, it's totally. Uh, actually, I found places that are worst worse believe it really oh yeah i will i will put seattle above anything we have here in the east in a second i love seattle i love washington but your traffic the hell with that dude i would rather drive into brooklyn which i have done in the past yeah again and again and again and again before i drive in seattle again that's that's what it is i would drive in boston before i drive in seattle again. anyway <laughs> enough picking on seattle so the point is, it makes it easier for people to actually try it. People who live down there, I said, hey, you want to come try it with me? They're like, I don't want to get out and ride that long. You know, it's a lot of time. I don't have time. It's right there now. So now you're going to get more interest, more people checking it out. And shout out to Alpine X, which I shout out a lot too. And their facilities, that they're going to open. It's a wonderful thing. Try the indoor thing, especially if you live down there. Matt, when is a Hill Street snowboarding store opening in American Dream. <laughs> well, uh, not anytime soon, but sure. I, all I could say is maybe someday. How about that? That'll work. That, yeah, maybe someday. Yeah, like laughs aside, now it, some, Matt has his stuff available in shops. Now you yeah. go to the website, which is hillstreetsnowboarding.com, right? It's hillstreetsnow.com. Hill Street Snow. Okay. Hill Street yes. Snow, everybody. Tim Bift. Again, the memory shot. It's fine. Fall, um, HillStreetSnow.com. Now, you can obviously order from the website and everything's there, and that's great. This is the 21st century. Sure. But his gear is available in shops. Now, you want to shout those out or tell us how that works? Or Yeah. So, uh, there's a, some some local shops. Of course, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm starting from ground zero. So, just like skiing and snowboarding, I'm starting from where I happen to live, you know? Um, so there's a local shop here, Ski Barn, and they have a few different locations and they've been buying and selling some of my gear for, this will be the third season that, uh, that they're going to pick up my stuff. Uh, and I reached out to a couple of other shops that have committed to buying stuff. Um, nice. Mount Everest Ski Shop and, uh, Board 44 or rather 44 Board, uh, is on the local shop here. There's a shop called Holy Stokes in the Poconos that uh, they've been a really big supporter of my stuff, uh, of me from since they opened um so i'm just kind of getting into some local shops and and it's funny getting into local shops is is a it's a learning curve for me it's a it's a it's a whole new aspect of of expanding my reach um with these products with hill street to get my clothes on the backs of snowboarders yeah you know? um totally so it's it's a it's a it's amazing every day is like amazing with this stuff i love it Absolutely. And, and that's good. As long as you love it, then you'll keep doing it. And we, we all get to see it grow. Like how long has Hill Street been around? Like you said, it's been in a couple stores for about like brick and mortar for a few seasons now, three years. Yep. Has you, have you been along around much longer than that or no? No. Um, this, this coming 22, 23 ski season is technically year three 
uh, for Hill Street Snowboarding. So this is something that I, I started, let's say it's like three years ago, solid three years ago. And when you start something like this from zero, right? Like it, it's an idea. This is, I was yeah. watching TV one day and I said, that, wouldn't it be cool if I had a t-shirt that, you know, and, and no, no, uh, negative implication towards any of this, this ski or snowboard companies, but I wanted something more than another Burton shirt or more than, you know, a union t-shirt or, or sweatshirt or a hoodie from, uh, you know, one of the other manufacturers, K2 or Solomon or whatever it was. Right. Sure. I thought, wouldn't it be cool to just should have a company that that's what the company is. It's short and sweet. I make t-shirts and other soft goods for snowboarders for the main purpose of promoting the sport of snowboarding because I love snowboarding. That's it. Simple. I love it. I love simple and to the point. And that's what it is. And again, we don't hate around here. I wear Sail Street snowboarding shirts. If you tell me, dude, where have you ridden? I'll be like, I don't. But I'll go with you on my <laughs> sleeve. And they'll be like, but why? I'll be like, because it's just going to be a mess. It's easier this way. Just trust me. But yeah, kidding course. aside, mm, excuse me. It's a great way. It's it's a great way to promote the sport by putting your designs. Now you do you do this? <clears throat> excuse me. You do the designing yourself. So that's a great question. Um, sometimes. Okay. So part of this journey that I'm learning about every every day uh, is I have like an idea for a design, but I don't have the 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 artistic skills to execute that idea. I have some basic skills. You know, I, I could kind of manipulate some images and I have my iPad and I can draw stuff and I can trace stuff and that's kind of cool. But um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, in the beginning, I would go to websites like Fiverr. If you guys are familiar with Fiverr, um, it's, a, it's a website where artists will kind of make themselves available for gigs and they'll post samples of their artwork. And I'll say, oh, I have this idea for a graphic and I'll peruse different artists and say, oh, your, your style feels like it would be really good to execute this idea that I have. And then I'll reach out to different artists. We'll talk about the ideas. Um, they'll do two or three kind of revisions or iterations of the idea, typically putting their own spin on it, which I more often than not love because it's like as an artist, they have an insight to how a graphic might look better. Like I'll say like a great example is, uh, you know, again, trying to marry the kind of imagery between streets and, and mountains. I had this idea of a spray can, like a can of spray paint that morphed into a snowboard. So like the bottom half of it was a snowboard, but the top half was a can of spray paint. Awesome. And right. It sounds like a great idea. Totally. And I started to sort of piece it together and I looked at it and I said, this looks horrible. This is a, this is a very, very bad execution of what could be a good idea. Um, so if anyone out there is listening and thinks that they could draw what I just explained, please contact me because I have yet to find anyone who can kind of draw this image. But uh, so the way I gather images is I'll kind of come up with ideas or I'll I'll, maybe I'll meet people while I'm snowboarding or as I'm pitching to different stores, someone will say, oh, my brother or my cousin or my niece, um, she's an artist or he's an artist. Here's their number. Here's a link to their website. And I'll just connect with random people, um, talk about ideas. I'll, I'll typically explain what Hill Street snowboarding is all about. And I'll say, run with it. You know, just something cool, just a, a cool graphic that works for a t-shirt or a sweatshirt or a hat or whatever. That's awesome. Like you're yeah. definitely getting people. And again, like I said, it's not just the clothing manufacturers. It's not just the athletes. It's the artists too. It's the people at ground level, it's the people running these places. So everybody's in on it. And I'm going to, I would assume when you start explaining it, like obviously an artist is an artist, but you're probably going to get maybe some of the more interested interesting work from those who are also into the snow sports i would assume oh, yeah. and you should never assume but i'm guessing yeah it's it's interesting because uh 
you're a hundred percent accurate with that observation. The best graphics that I've been able to collect are from artists who are also either skiers or snowboarders or into things like skateboarding or BMX or, you know, these kind of, you know, I hate to use the word, but the extreme sport, Mm -hmm. uh, kind of venues, um, they get it. They get the, the passion, uh, and what it's like to have a passion for something that, um, might not necessarily be considered mainstream by a lot of their peers because it's not, you know, it's not football or baseball or basketball. It's, you know, especially when you're from Brooklyn, those three sports, football, baseball, basketball, they are like church, you know, they are religious followings of people. And uh, here I am growing up in Sheep's Head Bay, Brooklyn, and I'm telling people, oh yeah, I'm into snowboarding. And they're like, what the hell is snowboarding? What's wrong with you? You know, <laughs> so it's, uh, it's been an interesting come up, if you will. I believe it. I, I can only believe it, but I, you know, it's, I think it's pretty cool. Um, one of the things that draws me to Hill Street snowboarding and the idea of the city meeting the mountain areas is that there are urban aspects to skiing and snowboarding. If you've never seen, and I'm sure anybody who listens to this has seen street, um, whatever, whether it's a film edit or even a competition, there is street version. You know, we listen, we talk about skateboarding and in competitions, whether it be the X games, I don't think they have street in the Olympics. I think, I don't remember what the skateboarding in the Olympics was. I don't think anybody even noticed really, but you know, it, and that's not a slight on skateboarding. That's a slight on the Olympics. Um, Bingo. Yep. Yep. Totally. And, but there is, there is street riding. And I think that, I, I think it's great to see something come out of the street beyond that. Like, you know, you go ahead and you see, you go to any ski mountain that has their name on something guaranteed. It's going to have mountains and trees along with their logo. That's just the way it is because that's where we are. Yeah. I like the urban aspect, I think. Yeah. It's uh, it, it's really interesting is that, you know, that's, that would be my foundation in all of this. Now, I, when I was a little kid, you know, in Brooklyn, um, I, I was one of those skateboard BMX kids with the little freestyle bikes and racing around Brooklyn. And we would go to the street spots, you know, uh, the Brooklyn banks, if anyone who's a skater listening to this knows about the Brooklyn banks, any BMX kid listening to this knows about the Brooklyn banks, it's just kind of big banked area underneath the Brooklyn bridge uh, on the Manhattan side, actually, oddly it's called the Brooklyn banks, but, uh, yeah, all right. But, uh, when when you're getting into things like it's it's so weird so i come from this world of you know make use of what is available to you right sure if it's a parking lot then learn how to do like flatland tricks on a bmx bike if it's a banked like just a, a banked wall somewhere go skate up it and try to do a kickflip at the top and not kill yourself you know mm. um and and it was amazing to meet other people uh that that helped form my whole foundation in in all of this passion and getting into skiing i remember that as a kid and picking up ski magazines and and everything was so like perfect and and polished and this is the way to make the perfect turn and this is what you're supposed to look like when you do things um to me that was it, it was a, a whole strange new world to learn about. And I, and I ate it up. I loved every second of it. I, I, I had the perfect Tyrolia jacket with the skin tight ski pants. Um, you know, I had my, my first pair of skis, I think were, uh, a company called Hark, which, uh, of course is no longer in existence. And, um, and then I had like some, so old K2 skis and, uh, and that kind of stuff. And I had my Dalbello racing ski boots and everything like fit perfect and looked perfect. And I had the perfect pom-pom on my hat. And uh, it was weird because I left this this environment of just make use of whatever is available to, you know, save your pennies and, and have this image that the magazine kind of tells you you need to have. Um, and then enter snowboarding and the parts of the world where I snowboarded, right? Like the Northeast. But, you know, sure. Yeah. You know, Camelback and the places like this, um, most of the participants, most of the people snowboarding were kids from 
the suburbs, you know, like, or kids from like Brooklyn and the Bronx and Queens. Um, so they brought this element, this, this, this street concept element into this world that up until now was like, it, it had a design to it. You know, it had a look and feel that you expected when you got there and, you know, enter a bunch of teenage boys, you know, listening to punk rock music or rap music and, uh, you could imagine how worlds collided when that started. Uh, oh yeah, it it was and, something. That yeah. I think what's great about all of this, like this kind of melting pot of stuff, is that it, it's all evolved in such a way where you know you look at the park rat ski kids and the park rat snowboarders, and they're just a bunch of kids jumping on rails and doing flips and twirls and spins and all that stuff, and it's. It's awesome. I love every second of it. It's just an amazing thing. It it is awesome, and I, I'm glad that there's someone out there who's pushing this. A city person who is pushing it, like, hey, you can get off the highway, head up wherever now across mm-hmm. the river, or just down the street if you're in you know North Jersey and do yeah. this, and then you can head out whether it be to upstate New York or Vermont or New Hampshire or Connecticut or the Yagu Valley in Rhode Island. Yes, they have a place yeah. too, kids. Yeah. Um I think what you I think what you're doing is great because of what it pushes. Like some people would say, well it's just another t shirt maker. I'm like, no, it's the idea behind it. It's it's why you're okay. wearing that, you're pushing this man's idea. I think that's great. That that's super cool that you get it. I it's I think it's awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, you're totally welcome. That's cool. So before we get out of here, let's let's go over the plugs again real quick so everybody can get there. And again, if you like what Matt has to say, I'm sure you do. He's been at it old school. I'm at it old school. Everybody, Almost all of you, except for the kids, but your parents are pushing you into it. You don't have your own identities yet, so just go with it. Um, just kidding, kids. I love you, as you know. Nice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but so we got hillstreetsnow.com, correct? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, so there you can go there. You can, you know, order shirts, um, order whatever he's got on there. You could totally do that. There are the places he's mentioned, um, the shops around local. Yep. Mm-hmm. Ski me. Barn and Mount Everest and 44 Board and uh, Holy Stokes up in the Poconos. And, and you know what? Ask for it. If you're it, wherever you are, walk into a shop and say, hey, do you guys carry Hill Street stuff? So that when I do eventually get around to calling those shops, they'll know and they'll they'll be an incentive to to pick up some stuff. Absolutely. If you yeah. see it and you like it and you want to, and I know for some of the younger folks, sure, 21st century website, Shopify, whatever it is. I don't know who he actually is for a host and it doesn't matter. But the point is e-commerce. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But. For those who are still in the brick and mortar place, ask for it now. And you will you accept the shop soliciting you? Like on his website, I'm sure there's all the contact information you would need, right? Yep, absolutely. Please do. Please call. Yeah. And and honestly, the just just to kind of plant this as well to any of the shop owners out there that might be listening, and really for everyone who's listening. A big part of this whole push to put my stuff into shops is we need the shops. Brick and mortar are necessary, necessary parts of skiing and snowboarding. You it, you cannot replicate trying on a pair of boots from a from a website, and you cannot try on a jacket from a website. Um, you can't touch and feel skis you can't go and talk with the local ski guys or snowboard guys you can't get your board tuned or put or your skis put together you know get your bindings mounted from a website you can't do that stuff so brick and mortar are the lifeblood of skiing and snowboarding so that anything that i can do uh, and i encourage everyone listening to this uh to to support brick and mortar shops Go out there and buy a sticker or a hat or whatever. It doesn't make a difference. Walk in and just spend time with people. It's it's what it's all about. It really is. Man, I could keep Matt on here for hours talking about stuff, I think, because nice. 
there there was there was a time and that time needs to be here again where the shop was I, I i'm hesitant to say cultural because that's not really what i mean but it was part of the experience that's what you did you went down to the shop and granted you had your levels but you know of good and bad and who who's where and why what you can get and so on and so forth but that's just retail who cares about that you, yeah. you're not wrong someone who knows what they're talking about someone who can get it done and not only can they get it done they know the area too you say hey dude what what should i ride and they tell you go to here 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 and if you get off at the top of this lift go down about 300 feet turn right and just sneak into the woods and that's your smoke spot if you're into that I, I don't exactly know. but the hidden stuff the local stuff this is where you learn this and these people are very nice they just want to share the stoke as the kids say yeah, so we're going to have to get back into that another time, but hillstreetsnow.com, Hill Street Snowboarding Gear, ask for it if it's not in a shop, shop owners, call Matt up. He'll get he'll he'll talk to you. It's it's that please. Yeah, please. He's a nice guy. <laughs> it clearly knows Thank his you. stuff old school. <laughs> Thanks a lot, dude. I really appreciate you coming on and talking about this. I hope we push the product well. I hope a couple people buy some things from you and really get the name out there, man. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate this opportunity. It's so great to chat with you and you know, quote unquote meet uh, you know on this platform. It's amazing. Uh, can't thank you enough. This is such an exciting thing for me. So, oh, you're very welcome, awesome, man. Awesome. And if if you're up here in New England, let me know. I'm sure one of us will be down there and uh, uh, going down to the to big snow sometime. I'll give you a ring if I'm on the way down there. Absolutely, I get up to uh, to Stratton and Mount Snow a lot. Uh, I got some friends that live out that way. So yeah, maybe we'll meet in the middle somewhere. That'd be great. Fair enough. Thank you, dude. I really do appreciate it. All right. Have a great day right. or evening, wherever you are, <laughs> wherever you <laughs> are. Enjoy. And there he goes. Matt Viola from Hill Street Snowboarding. Hillstreetsnow.com. Hill Street Snowboarding on Facebook and Instagram. All those links will be in the description, in the show notes. Remember, check that only if you are parked. If you listen to the Ski Rich Media Podcast in the car, do not pick up your phone and look now. It's dangerous and you will get a ticket. Once again, shout out to Matt from Hill Street Snowboarding. That was a fun episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. And again, I could probably keep Matt on for a little while longer, just talking, 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 talking. So he'll probably be back later on in the season or another time or next season, or you never know. Or even on social media, Ski Rex social media, which is Ski Rex Media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and LinkedIn as well. You can find me on all four of those. You might see Matt on there if we get to go skiing together this year so beyond that i just wanted to give you a quick little update you see sometimes things happen after these episodes are recorded that's the thing with recorded episodes if it was live you'd get stuff the day after it happened or whatever but these are recorded so since this is future tim after the interview which you could probably tell because the audio might sound a little different i have picked up a new sponsor, St. Skis out of Gorham, New Hampshire. St. Custom Skis and Snowboards have decided to partner up with Ski Rex Media. So I'm giving them a plug right now. We'll get better plugs at the beginning of episodes once. Because let me tell you something. This new sponsorship, this new partnership happened after I recorded with Matt. You'll know when new episodes start because it'll be the Saint Skis plug will be at the beginning of the episode. And I've already done an announcement and I'll probably do another announcement just for the fun of it. I don't know. We'll see. But shout out to KJ from KJ's Top Notch Tuning up there in Gorham. He's part of Saint Skis. It's him and his dad. They're going to be making Ski Rex Media a custom pair of skis and we'll get more into that as they get closer to being finished and to being delivered. So shout out to Saint Skis. Shout out to Matt from Hill Street Snowboarding. Shout out to Whaleback. Check SkiRexMedia.com for all of the that information including everything you could ever want to know about ski rex media including contact information the links to the social media which i already gave out and everything else you could ever want to know right right and that also includes patreon remember right now patreon subscribers get early access to the podcast you get it on sunday it comes out on wednesday for everybody else but you can get it on sunday if you don't want to wait plus there'll be some other tidbits coming there i am tim from ski rex media have a good day night evening morning whenever it is you're listening to it if you're listening to it in the car on the way to work have a good time sitting there with me listening to me while you're in rush hour i hope it's not too bad i am tim from ski rex media and i will see you out there this season later yeah.